Hi, my name is Prasenjit and I work for BMC Atrium Orchestrator product. In the previous part of this video series on REST API operations in BAO79, we saw how to generate BAO authentication token and reuse the token to perform some repository resource management activities such as adapter and module upload and delete operations. In this video, we'll focus on adapter management functionality offered by the REST API. Let's get started. Let's see the adapter management operations that REST API has to offer in BAO79. Some of the operations that you can perform are add and configure adapter, enable and disable adapter, start and stop adapter on the peer, get a list of all the activated adapters, and upgrade an already activated adapter on the grid. Let's start with add and configure adapter. This is the REST URL for adding an adapter on the grid. The operation type will be post. In the header section, we need to provide the content type and authentication token. In the body, we have to make sure we select the type as raw and application JSON from the drop down menu. This is the JSON format that we need to send in order to add the web service adapter. So, as you can see, we have provided the name, the adapter type the version, the revision, and the actual XML configuration of the adapter. You can find the sample adapter configuration template from the RPMC product documentation. And lastly, the configuration type that we'll be using is XML. Let's take a look at the grid manager just to ensure that we don't have an active adapter. At this point, we have no adapters on the grid. Let's execute this request. The requested adapter has been successfully configured. Let's refresh this tab. As you can see, the adapter has now been configured. And this is the adapter configuration that we just sent. Next step is to activate the adapter on one of the available peers. Select enable adapter on the peer. This is the rest URL. The type will be post. In the header section, we have to provide the content type and authentication token. In the body, we have to select draw and JSON from the drop down menu. Now, we need to provide the name of the adapter that we want to activate, the version, the revision, and lastly, the peer on which we wish to activate this adapter. Click the send button. The adapter has been enabled. Let's validate. The adapter is now successfully running on the CDP peer. Let's try to disable this adapter now. This is the URL for disable operation. The type will once again be post. In the header, we need to provide the content type and authentication token. We have to specify the adapter name, version, and revision along with the peer name from which we wish to disable this adapter. Click send. The adapter has now been successfully disabled. Let's validate. As you can see, the adapter is no longer running on the CDP. Next, we'll try the start and stop operation. Before that, let's re-enable this adapter. It's now successful. Let's try to stop this adapter now. This is the REST URL for stopping the adapter. The operation is post. We need to provide the content type and authentication token. And the name of the adapter along with the revision and version. And lastly, the peer name on which we wish to stop this adapter. Click send. The request was successful. Let's validate. The adapter is now in stop state. Let's try to start this up again. Go to start operation. This is the rest URL. The operation type is again post. 
Let's provide the authentication token along with the content type. We wish to start the web service adapter on the CDP. The version is 2016.02 and the revision is 1. Click send. The adapter state is successfully set. Let's refresh this. As you can see, the adapter is now running. In the next and final part of this video series, we'll see how to use the REST API to fetch the list of all active adapters, perform adapter upgradation, and module management operations on the grid manager.